Dog had his first television appearance on May 9th, 1955. The original Kermit was made out of an old coat belonging to Jim Henson's mother, and his eyes, as you may have guessed, were ping pong balls. So Kermit the Frog originally was made out of the most random things? It was like they just found stuff and was like, okay, we're gonna make a frog out of this somehow. You're ruining my childhood, Jess. The next fact, which I kept finding all over the internet, which is kind of pointless to know, is that Kermit the Frog is left-handed and he has five fingers and he is the only Muppet to have five fingers. And I never actually realized how creepy his hands actually look. They're just weird like long skinny fingers like I've never noticed them. The next fact that is really strange is that he has so many family members. In real life after a female frog becomes mature she can lay over 50,000 eggs at once depending on the species. So because Kermit is a frog you can imagine how big his family actually is. He says he has 4,000 brothers and sisters. <laughs> he claims that their family gatherings for Christmas can take many weeks and months just waiting for everyone to hang their coats up. I cannot imagine having 4,000 brothers and sisters. So now that we've talked about some strange facts, let's get into a creepypasta about a Lost Muppet Show episode. As you guys probably know, Kermit was best known for his time on The Muppet Show, which first aired on September 5th, 1970. And you guys are familiar with characters like Miss Piggy, Fozzie Bear, Beaker, all those fun characters. Beaker is literally my spirit animal. <laughs> there have been a total of 120 episodes that have aired, and a creepypasta came out that there was one episode that was especially disturbing that no one can find. There are so many people that can swear they saw this episode when they were a kid, but there's no record of it anywhere, so it has been named a lost episode. People remember Remember that in this episode there was absolutely no sound throughout the entire video. There was no music, there was no talking, just this very faint sound of static that you could barely hear in the background. It showed all the characters walking around, talking to each other, just like any normal episode would go. Obviously you couldn't hear what they were saying to each other, but it was like they were going through the motions but you couldn't hear anything. Except they didn't look like they normally did. There their costumes were dirty and ripped. You could see the string from their clothing dragging behind them, like their seams were coming loose, like the puppets were actually unraveling on camera. Their faces were droopy and it almost made them look like they were literally melting in front of you. But they continued to walk around smiling, acting like absolutely nothing was wrong. This went on for 30 minutes and then the episode ended. And what's weird is that when the credits scene appeared, music suddenly turned turned on full volume, so it made anyone watching jump out of their seats. People said it was just such a bizarre episode, and after watching it, the whole day they felt out of it, almost as if they were living in sort of a dream world with that buzzing still in their ears. So I thought that was super creepy and really wanted to tell you guys about that. I find Lost episodes so fascinating, and I want to do more videos on them. Okay, so this next creepy story is called Muppets with People Eyes. It's basically about this guy who had frequent sleep paralysis. Now this is not supposed to be a creepypasta. This is a guy who actually posted about this experience happening to him. Sleep paralysis is a feeling of being conscious but unable to move. It occurs when a person passes between stages of wakefulness and sleep. During these transitions you may be unable to move or speak for up to a few seconds or a few minutes and people often see nightmarish figures. So having a sleep paralysis is definitely a horrible experience. You never want to feel like you're actually stuck in a nightmare in real life, unable to move or do anything. And this guy that we're talking about had frequent sleep paralysis, except instead of seeing creepy like creatures and stuff like that, he saw Muppet characters standing at the foot of his bed with human eyes. They would just be at the foot of his bed staring at him, which may sound silly to you, but I feel like if you put yourself in that situation, that would be so scary because you expect them to always look happy and positive and cute, but when they have actual human eyes, oh no. So just imagine these in the middle of the night, in the darkness, at the foot of your bed. 
Now, how do you feel about it? All right, let's talk about a controversial Kermit the Frog book. This book is called For Every Child, A Better World. It was a book produced by the Muppets in cooperation with United Nations. So the intent behind this book was actually really good and it was meant to spread awareness, depicting those in need who are in less fortunate conditions. It was basically trying to show kids the real struggles that people go through in this world. And most kids had never like heard of this before or known of this before. These books were in libraries and schools all around the world for kids to read, but many parents thought this book was just too disturbing for a very young audience. Because as you can imagine, anybody watching The Muppet Show or Kermit the Frog, they're probably gonna be toddlers. So parents were saying the pictures in the books were too negative and depressing and it was actually upsetting children. So in 2015, they actually tried to ban the book from libraries and schools, saying that they wanted to shield children from these types of situations. So I kind of want to know your opinion on this. Do you think that kids should be shown stuff like this about the real world? I actually think they covered some really important topics. I don't know, it's a tough thing to think about, but it was an extremely controversial book. And the last fact is kind of a funny one. People have found Kermit the Frog's long lost twin. Kermit the Frog's distant live action cousin has just been discovered in the jungles of Costa Rica. This new species is called Diane's Bare-Hearted Glass Frog. It is most remarkable for its translucent underbelly and its bulging white eyes, which look just like Kermit's. The frog was discovered living between 400 meters and 800 meters up the mountains, which is probably why it took so long to be discovered. Kermit the Frog's long lost twin. I absolutely love that. He's so cute. Donald Duck is an animated character created by Walt Disney. He is a hot-headed duck who is often the victim of exceptionally bad luck. He's normally depicted wearing a sailor shirt, cap, and a bow tie, but he never has trousers. Donald is the best friend of Mickey Mouse, whom he sometimes envies. Donald made his animated debut in the 1934 theatrical short called The Wise Little Hen, and overall he starred in over 190 films. Now, as you guys can imagine, Donald Duck's voice is one of the most iconic character voices of all time. If you close your eyes and hear his voice, you know immediately it's Donald Duck. And he actually used to have this theme song whenever he was in an episode. And the theme song goes, who's got the sweetest disposition? One guess, guess who? Who never, never starts an argument? Who never shows a bit of temperament? Who's never wrong, but always right? Who'd never dream of starting a fight? Who gets stuck with all the bad luck? No one but Donald Duck. <laughs> I didn't know about that song. It's kind of cute. All right, so let's get into his creepiest episodes and movies. And these all actually aired. They're not creepy pastas. They actually were real. Because Donald Duck can be so unpredictable and crazy because of his hot temper, there have been just a lot of disturbing scenes of him in movies and TV shows. And they were all either banned because of how scary they were, or they just got a lot of complaints from parents. So here are some examples. The first one is called Trombone. Bone trouble. In this episode, the scariest part is when he suddenly starts growing these long, sharp teeth out of nowhere, and then he laughs while saying, power, power, power. And people had just never seen him literally turn evil. I mean, Donald's a duck, so he shouldn't have long, sharp teeth but he did in this episode. Now, his most disturbing tantrum was actually in the movie called Mickey and the Beanstalk. It came out in 1947, and as you can imagine, it was an adaptation of Jack and the Beanstalk. Well, in this movie, he has a complete breakdown, and I remember watching this movie as a kid, and this part I always made my grandma fast forward because I just couldn't watch it. So the movie starts off where him, Mickey, and Goofy are extremely poor, so they don't have any money to buy food, so they're basically starving. It shows them sitting at a table, cutting up really thin slices of bread and like sharing it. But Donald is so hungry that he actually starts losing his mind and going crazy. He literally starts eating his plate and his utensils and Mickey tries to hold him back. And then his eyes start going weird and he begins babbling nonsense. He then notices there's an ax hanging on the wall and he decides to like creep over to use it to eat his food 
friends. But before he does, he thankfully notices a cow outside. So his attention then turns to the cow because he wants to go eat the cow. So he starts walking towards it with his ax about to eat it, but thankfully the cow gets away in time. But this scene caused so many nightmares in kids. And like, if you go on YouTube and like search up this scene and look through the comments, everyone says how much this scared them as a kid. There was another episode that scared a lot of people called Donald Duck and the Gorilla. It's where a gorilla literally breaks into his house and chases him everywhere. And the whole episode is Donald trying to get away. And there's this one close-up of the gorilla's eyes and it shows a gravestone saying here lies a dead duck. And I just remember watching that episode as a kid and it was just so violent and I almost felt like it was completely unnecessary. I think my grandma actually saw my sister and I watching it and told us we could never see it again because of how violent and disturbing it was. So whenever that would come on my grandma would like fast forward it. <laughs> now there was also this very disturbing Donald Duck comic that came out quite a while ago. I believe this was from like the 60s or 70s, but it shows Donald Duck literally drowning Goofy instead of saving him. So I was able to find the comic online so I could show you guys. We'll read it through together. And if it's a little bit pixelated and hard to see, this is a very old comic, so I could only find this image of it. So it starts off with Donald Duck and Goofy sitting on like a dock and they're just singing, they're just fishing, having a good time. And and then I guess Goofy pulls up a fish and it hits Donald Duck in the head and he gets kind of mad because he doesn't want to get wet and covered in a fish. So he's holding the fish looking angry and he throws it at Goofy and that causes Goofy to fall off the deck and into the water. So Goofy says, help, help, throw me a rope. So Donald Duck goes over to the rope and he says, tie it around your foot. So he throws it at Goofy and Goofy says, okay, it's tied, let her go. And then instead of pulling Goofy up, Donald Duck kicks the anchor into the water which is obviously gonna pull Goofy down and then he just walks away in anger feeling good about what he just did so poor Goofy is not in a very good situation so this comic came out a lot of people were upset because kids were reading it and obviously it's not a very good message to get out to children that it's okay to like not help your friends so I cannot believe that was an actual thing that was produced and sent out like what? I just don't get where all this like violence is coming from. It just blows my mind. All right, let's talk about a lost episode that had Donald Duck in it. So there's this rumor about a very old VHS tape that came out in like the 60s showing Donald Duck looking and acting strange. Apparently the whole episode was fine, but after the credits rolled, the screen went black and Donald Duck walked in. His eyes were completely white and he had no pupils and he just stared at the screen with no sound playing. And apparently he just stood there like staring at you until the VHS eventually came to an end. And some people say they still own this VHS and are too afraid to watch it. Other people said they sold it as soon as they saw that scene. Other people say they've accidentally bought that VHS in a garage sale. Bought? That's not a word, Jess. So apparently sometimes you can still find this really old creepy VHS. But I know personally if I saw that, I wouldn't sleep for the rest of my life. All right, and lastly, I want to talk about the creepy homemade Donald Duck costumes that people used to wear. Back in the 1930s and 1940s, a lot of people handmade their Halloween costumes. And as cool as handmade stuff can be, sometimes the costumes came across a little creepy. Like if you go on Google and type in handmade vintage Halloween costumes, all the pictures that come up are very disturbing. I've done a whole other video on vintage Halloween costumes. So in my research, I found this homemade Donald Duck costume that someone war and it's one of the creepiest things I've ever seen. And I mean, I can appreciate the effort this must have taken, but if I saw this in person, I would 100% run away. <laughs> it looks like the beak was made out of a paper bag or something, and I think that's where the creepy factor comes in. And even if you look through the other vintage Donald Duck costumes, it's stuff from your nightmares. So I'm just really glad that like we don't really hand make our costumes nowadays to look that scary. Like I know people do hand make costumes, but they look a lot less like they used to. <laughs>
Years ago, there was a group of three girls who went to high school together. They were all best friends, and one night during the summer holidays, they decided to have a sleepover party. So they spent all day long planning their sleepover, and because they were all horror fans, they decided that they wanted to go and rent a horror movie. It was late at night when the three girls piled into a car and drove down to their local video rental store, but it was closed. So the girls spent the next half hour driving around trying to find another place that they could rent a movie. Eventually, they found a little shop that was located in a side street and went inside. Now the girls were not able to all agree on a movie to rent, so one of the girls went to the lady behind the counter and asked if she had any suggestions for them. The woman told her that she had just the thing for them and disappeared into a back room. Now while they were waiting, one of the girls saw a videotape just sitting by itself on the counter. It didn't have a box cover or a label, and it seemed to be very dirty and stained. She was curious to see what it was, so she reached over and picked it up. Just then the woman came rushing out from the back room, grabbed the tape from the girl's hand, and with a very strange smile on her face, she said, That's not something you girls should be watching. When they asked her what it was, she told the girls that they should not be touching it, and that it was a home movie. Then she handed them an old horror film and told them it would be a much better movie for them to watch. So they all agreed, and right before they left the store, one of the girls took the opportunity to sneakily grab the tape from the counter and put it into her purse. Later Later that night when the girls all returned home, that girl took it out of her purse and said, hey, look what I stole, we should watch it. They put the tape in the video recorder and pressed play. All of a sudden, the power went out and the room was plunged into darkness. However, the television was still on. There was a loud crackle of static and then the movie started to play. On the screen, they saw this woman and she was surrounded by a bunch of angry men. They were yelling at her and carrying these burning torches. It looked to be some sort of witch trial from the 1600s, and suddenly the men set a huge fire underneath her. The woman began laughing maniacally, but the men kept yelling things at her like, She's a witch! Burn her! As the flames rose higher and higher, she said that all who witness her death will suffer the same fate in two days' time. Then there was a screech of static and the VCR stopped playing. The terrified girls sat in the dark for a long time until the power came back on. Now they tried to all convince each other that it must have been some sort of prank, but after a while they agreed that they should probably return the tape immediately. When they arrived at the location of the video store, it was gone. All they found was an abandoned building and an empty parking lot. Two days later, all of the girls that were at this sleepover perished, and the police that were investigating their deaths said it was incredibly mysterious, especially because all three deaths had been caused by a fire. Now they found a trash can outside of one of the girls' houses. It had been completely set on fire and everything inside it was destroyed except for a videotape. This tape had been completely untouched by the flames. And guess which tape it was? And that's how this story ends. Oh my goodness, it kind of reminds me of the ring story in a way, but instead of seven days, they have two days to live. Incredibly creepy. And then we have a story called the Forbidden Barbie VHS tape. There's a girl that was staying at her babysitter's house for the weekend while her parents were away on a work trip. Now her babysitter had so many boxes of old VHS tapes and told her that she could feel free to look through them and pick out a movie that she wanted to watch. She was searching through all of them for about 10 minutes until she found this one particular tape that was named Barbie Fell. It showed this picture of Barbie's face except she was not smiling. She almost had this extremely panicked look on her face. She showed the tape to her babysitter and her babysitter looked incredibly confused. She said that she did not remember owning that movie as a kid and had no idea how how it got into her collection of tapes. But the girl was so curious, so she decided to put it on anyway. The first five minutes of the movie was static, and then a date popped up on the screen that read September 3rd, 1985. And then warped violin music started to play, and a video of someone's backyard showed up on the screen. Then this woman with a long blue gown started to walk through this tall grass. What was so strange is that she looked like a human version of Barbie, and there was all this mascara running down her face as if she had been crying. Suddenly the girl realized that it wasn't just anyone's backyard, it was her babysitter's backyard. So she called her babysitter to come see, but she was nowhere to be found in the house. She kept watching as the woman in the movie somberly walked along through the grass, and suddenly this man's voice boomed through the movie, and he said, See Barbie walk. Then five minutes later, She's not feeling well today. It showed this close-up of her face crying. Barbie better watch where she's going. 
And then the girl watched in surprise as Barbie fell into a deep, dark hole in the ground, her haunting scream echoing as she disappeared into the darkness. Goodbye, Barbie, the man said as the film turned to static. And that's the end of this story. How bizarre is this? I have never heard of a Barbie VHS tape that was like this creepy, but I found this story also very intriguing, so I had to include it in this video. As always, we're gonna start off with the history in case you have no idea what strawberry shortcake is. And not the dessert, <laughs> like the doll and the cartoon. The character first appeared on a Laurel Valentine's Day greeting card in 1973. At the time, the character was simply called Girl with a Daisy. It was this picture of a cute little girl. She was wearing this orange bonnet with strawberries all over it. And the art director knew that this card was super popular and he thought that it was popular because of of the strawberries. So because of this, they started creating more cards with girls wearing strawberry outfits, and eventually they came up with this character called Strawberry Shortcake. And she made her initial debut on a card holding this pink cat. And because the cards were doing so well, that's when they started to create the dolls. In 1979, toy manufacturer Kenner Products licensed the character and released the first Strawberry Shortcake doll. At the time, she sort of resembled a typical rag doll. She she had freckles, she had this yarny curly hair, she obviously had her bonnet with the strawberries printed on it, and then after she came out, they came out with a bunch of other characters. The Strawberry Shortcake line of characters each had their own fruit or dessert themed name with clothing to match, and they each had like a dessert themed pet as well. And it was super interesting and different for the time because the doll's hair actually smelled like the fruit that they represented, so it was one of like the first scents to dolls ever made, which was fascinating to people. And the characters were supposed to live and play in the land called Strawberry Land? From 1980 through 1985, television specials featuring Strawberry Shortcake were produced annually. They made another series in 2003 and then another one in 2009. So they're constantly revamping these shows and creating new dolls. And it's so interesting because Strawberry Shortcake now looks nothing like she did when she first came out in the 70s. All right, so let's talk about this lost tape creepypasta. This story takes place in 1992 when a young girl goes to a library with her father to pick out a movie to watch over the weekend. She was super, super indecisive, so she spent 30 minutes walking around the library, going down the aisles, trying to figure out which movie she wanted. But suddenly she came across one that instantly caught her attention. Now this VHS had absolutely no cover. It only had the words, strawberry shortcake can't sleep, written in like permanent marker. Now the father thought this was super odd, but the girl was very excited because she loved Strawberry Shortcake. She pretty much owned every single doll that ever came out. When they walked up to the librarian to check out the movie, the lady did a double take when she read the title and said that she had no idea that they had a Strawberry Shortcake movie. And she was even more confused as to why it didn't have a cover on it. So the girl brought the tape home and decided to play it before she went to bed because she always found Strawberry Shortcake to be a very comforting show, like she would usually fall asleep to watching Strawberry Shortcake. And this is why she was not prepared for what she was about to see. The tape started off with Strawberry Shortcake lying in bed in this very dimly lit room. She slowly begins to sit up and looks directly at the camera. Her expression looked very fearful and she starts to repeat this phrase over and over again. She keeps saying, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep don't go to sleep. In fact, she was saying it so much that the girl thought the tape was broken and tried to fast forward it. And that's when she discovered that Strawberry Shortcake was saying this for 20 minutes straight. The girl couldn't figure out why she was telling the viewers to not go to bed or to not go to sleep. And then she suddenly stops mid sentence and her eyes began to go completely black and hollow, like two large dark circles in her face. And then the screen turns to black and right before the movie ends, you can literally hear Strawberry Shortcake whisper, if you go to sleep, it will find you. And that's literally how the tape ended. So the girl and her father returned it the next day and that's the last time anyone ever heard of this. So super creepy. I always find like creepypastas about lost tapes of cartoons that we used to grow up with. It really freaks me out to hear about them because I used to love these shows so much. 
the Big Red Dog started off as a children's book written by Norman Bridwell in 1963. This large red character was the manifestation of Bridwell's childhood desire for a dog the size of a horse. That's ultimately what we all want, right? Just a really giant dog. Bridwell was a struggling commercial artist in New York City, and he hoped to expand his career by making illustrations for children's books. One day, he turned his drawing of a little girl and a large red dog into a complete children's book, and it was published soon after its submission to Scholastic and became a phenomenal success. It is now one of the most popular books in the world to teach children how to read, and since his creation, Clifford has appeared in more than 80 different books. There was an Emmy award-winning television series, and now there is this feature film coming out. I think it actually came out like a day or two ago. Now, when he first designed this character, he actually named him Tiny instead of Clifford, which obviously would have been an oxymoron because he's not tiny, he's, he's giant. However, his wife Norma told him that Tiny was just too much of a boring name and recommended the name Clifford after her childhood imaginary friend. And then the little girl is named after Bridwell's daughter, Emily Elizabeth. So literally Clifford is named after his wife's childhood imaginary friend. I don't know if that's cool or creepy. A lot of people also wonder why he chose Clifford to be the color red in general. And when he was asked this, this is the quote that he said, it was red because I happened to have red paint on the drawing table that night. That's the only reason why, convenience. Here are some really strange facts about him. It says, Clifford's big size comes with a big appetite. He eats 18.1 kilograms of dog food every day. Sometimes Clifford takes a shower using a fire hose and he can run 115 kilometers per hour. Wow. And when Clifford barks, it could be heard 16 kilometers away. So everything about this dog is quite insane. So that's all the history about him, and now we're gonna get into the creepier stuff. We're gonna talk about some printing errors when they first created this book. There was this rumor going around saying that when the very first Clifford books were being printed, they were having a lot of errors happening with the red ink. Well, one of the wrongly printed copies accidentally got approved and was sent out to a bookstore to be put for sale. Now, a parent went there and unknowingly bought this book for their child, not being aware of this printing error, obviously. And you're probably wondering, what's so bad about having this little mistake in a children's book? Well, there was one page where the red ink color was smeared everywhere, and it made it look like Clifford and Emily were standing in a bloodbath. This obviously traumatized the child because they thought something horrible happened to their favorite characters. So the parent ran right back to the bookstore and demanded something to be done to make this right. Well, no one really knows if this printing error rumor was true, but if it was, I feel really bad for this child having to see such a startling page in a book. Next, we have the imaginary friend conspiracy. During my research, I found a conspiracy talking about Clifford just being an imaginary friend of Emily's, and he isn't actually real. He's a figment of her imagination. So that would mean that everything that happens in the books and in the TV series is just all in her head. And her parents are letting her have these delusions because they know Clifford Clifford makes her happy. Her parents even built a giant dog house on their property so that Emily would think they could see Clifford as well. Now a lot of people were saying she must have some sort of mental disorder causing her to have all of these delusions and hallucinations, but I won't get into that too much because I hate when creepypastas are centered around like mental disorders. Something does not sit right with me about that. I feel like mental health should not just be put into a creepypasta just cause. And then we have the band episode. There's this legend of a lost episode where Clifford somehow gets bit by a wild animal and contracts rabies. So he goes wild, he starts foaming at the mouth, and begins to attack everyone and eat everybody in sight. So the people in the town gather together and decide that they have to take Clifford down so he doesn't hurt anybody else. They were trying to save the rest of the people that lived there. So Clifford dies, and at the very end of the episode it shows Emily and her father struggling to dig a grave big enough for Clifford. So so yeah, this is obviously just another creepypasta, I would assume, but imagine actually watching this as a kid, that would be so traumatizing. And then lastly, we have a creepypasta called Clifford the Big Dead Dog. 
I don't like that. Now, it was actually crazy how many creepypastas I found that were called this. So I'm gonna talk about just one of those today. This is about a little girl that borrowed a Clifford book from the library. It looked completely normal and she was super excited to read it when she got home. The first page just showed Clifford and Emily playing together in a flower field, but the next page showed Clifford coughing and falling over into the grass. Then it showed Clifford being very sick with a thermometer in his mouth. Then the next page showed Clifford with X's over his eyes, which you know what that means. You'd think the story would end here seeing as they showed Clifford passing away from some sort of illness. But no, the next pages showed Emily doing normal, regular, day-to-day -day things with Clifford, who seemed to be this zombie version of himself. And to make things worse, all the illustrations in the book showed these little flies around Clifford. And by the very last page, all that's left of him is a skeleton. But he's like still able to walk around and do things with Emily. So weird. I guess that means they really were best friends forever. Okay, so if you've read any of the Alice in Wonderland books or you've seen any of the movies, you basically know what the whole premise is about. I feel like even if you haven't seen any Alice in Wonderland movies, you know basically what happens to her. Alice falls asleep, ends up in Wonderland, eats and drinks various things that she shouldn't, she meets a bunch of bizarre characters, she faces off with the Queen of Hearts, and then she eventually finds her way back to her cat by the end of the movie. Now the Alice in Wonderland movie that came out in 1933 was 76 minutes long and it was created for a very young audience and it has all of the most famous characters like the White Rabbit, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, the Mad Hatter, the March Hare. The only thing is they do not look like how you would imagine them to. You know, in most of the Alice in Wonderland movies, they have the characters looking strange but still kid friendly. And in this particular movie, they were all created to be these monstrous things like every single character was designed to terrify you. There was even this one scene in the movie where the Queen of Hearts is having this giant feast and literally the food on their plates come alive and become these like creepy food beasts and like run around, they have these faces. It is so weird. And a lot of people say that the other really creepy thing about this movie is that the actors are obviously wearing these giant weird costumes and sometimes if the mouths of these creatures open really wide, you can see the actor's face like buried beneath the costume and it looks like humans are trapped inside these creepy monsters. Like it literally looks like people are needing to be freed. <laughs> because kids were so afraid to see this movie, it was a flop at the box office, which really isn't surprising. And then it was also soon overshadowed by other fantasy films that became classics like The Wizard of Oz. And so like I said, this Alice in Wonderland movie soon became super forgotten. Like I even had never heard about this film until now, until I was doing research for like creepy old black and white movies. And it's so bizarre how these filmmakers didn't hold back at all in trying to make Wonderland look as sinister and uninviting as possible. And as much as like this whole thing creeps me out, I'm also really intrigued by it. Like a lot of people nowadays will go and try to watch this movie just because of how strange and unsettling it is. And they recently put this movie on DVD and Blu-ray, so guess what I bought? I bought this movie to watch on the vlog channel. <laughs> it's actually coming in like two days, so I'm going to react to it on my other channel called V Vlogs. I am afraid. Now, there are a lot of adults now who look back on their childhood and remember seeing this movie, and they weren't sure if it was like a dream or not, like if this movie was actually real. A lot of adults say it was like a fever dream when they were a child. And they also say that a lot of these creepy characters stayed with them for years. Like they could not stop thinking about them. I also read a bunch of other reviews from adults who watched this movie as a kid and said it was cursed. There was this one viewer who decided to watch it at 3 a.m. with his friends at a sleepover and apparently the power went out in his house mid-movie, but somehow the only light that stayed on in their house was their TV screen and it was frozen on a scene of one of the creepy characters' faces and it stayed like that all night. Like they went and got their parents, they couldn't figure out how to turn the TV off, they didn't 
understand why the rest of the power in their house was out. It was just so weird. So yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna watch that because I am literally crazy. Now, this wasn't the only really creepy Alice in Wonderland film that ever came out. There was one that came out in 1903. It was a silent film and it was the very first Alice in Wonderland that was ever created. It came out only a few years after the writer Lewis Carell died. And because film technology wasn't great back then, obviously it was literally the turn of the century. They were only able to make this into a 12 minute film. But at the time it was the longest film ever produced in Britain. And honestly, just watching these scenes is so creepy guys. It's completely silent. And to explain a scene, they have to put the words up on the screen. Obviously no one's talking. There's only like music playing behind all the scenes. And like, honestly watching it, it reminds me of like an American horror story intro scene. <laughs> You know what I mean? Now, while I was doing research for this video, I found out some really intriguing facts about Alice in Wonderland. And I found out that the writer wasn't going to call it Alice in Wonderland at first. He actually had a bunch of other titles. Like he was gonna call it Alice's Adventures Underground. And then once that was rejected, he decided on Alice's Hour in Elfland. That was rejected. Another idea was Alice Among the Fairies. And then finally he came up with Alice in Wonderland, which I feel like is just the best one. Now any of these adaptations like books and movies were actually banned in some countries when they first came out. And the reason for them being banned was because animals should not use human language. Really? I don't know why that was such a big deal. I don't know if they thought it was like teaching kids like wrong things, you know, they're not factual things. But yeah, in some countries, animals were not supposed to be able to talk. Miss Piggy is one of the central characters on The Muppet Show, and her first appearance was in 1976. She's a prima donna pig who is absolutely convinced that she's destined for stardom and nothing is gonna stand in her way. Her public face is the soul of feminine charm, but she can instantly fly into a rage whenever she thinks she's insulted or thwarted, and Kermit the Frog has learned this all too well. When she isn't smothering him in kisses, she's sending him flying through the air with a karate chop. I remember absolutely loving her when I used to watch her as a kid. She always had the coolest outfits and I actually found her so pretty even though she's a pig. And she was actually played by a man named Frank Oz which also surprised me when I found out this fact and he was also Bert. Grover and Cookie Monster on Sesame Street. And another really interesting fact is that her name isn't actually Miss Piggy. Like that's kind of like the short form nickname that people call her, but her real name is Pegathius. Pegathius, is that how you say it? Which in Greek actually means river of passion, which is interesting. And what's so funny about her is that she's able to do everything, any hobby, any talent. She could do karate, she can play instruments, she could tap dance, she can ride motorcycles, she can do synchronized swimming, she does everything. And with her being so wonderful, you wouldn't think there could be any creepy stories about her, but you're wrong. And you should know me by now that with basically anything, I can find something scary about it. So this first story is called Lost and Found. This story is about a little girl that was walking through the mall with her mom when they passed a lost or found area that was basically this large container filled with toys and mittens and hats and just lost things that people lose in the mall. You know, probably toys that kids in strollers just drop without realizing it. And this little girl saw something in this pile of stuff that caught her attention. It was a little Miss Piggy plushie, one that came out in 1984. I believe they were actually called Muppet Babies. And this doll was dirty and had stains all over it and the hair was falling out. But the girl was still really drawn to it for some reason. She ran right over to it and grabbed it and the mom was obviously like, no, 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 like that's not yours and that's very dirty. But to their surprise, this mall employee walked right over to them and explained that this toy was actually dropped off by a family who didn't want it anymore, which was very unusual because usually Usually people are bringing stuff there because they don't own it and they just found it somewhere. But this family just like wanted to get rid of it. So she told the girl that if she wanted it, she could have it. And the mother was a little hesitant because obviously you don't know where it's been, where it's come from. It's, you know, a little, little dirty looking. But the girl was so obsessed with it that the mother let her have it. And as you can imagine, it only took a few days before something went wrong. The little girl began calling for her mom in the middle of the night, complaining that the plushie was talking 
talking to her. And the mother was so confused because it's not supposed to be a talking toy. So she picked it up and squeezed its hand and its stomach and it didn't say any words and there wasn't even a place to put a battery pack in. And this went on for weeks with her daughter not sleeping. So one night the mother decided to wait in the hallway right outside her daughter's bedroom. And to her surprise, almost right after her daughter had fallen asleep, she started to hear something coming from her daughter's closet where her Miss Piggy doll was kept, and it sounded like a man trying to make a high-pitched voice, kind of like he was trying to imitate Miss Piggy, which is terrifying to think about, and he was saying things like, little girl, little girl, come over here, come and see Miss Piggy, come get closer. So the mother ran into the room, picked up the plushie, took it into the kitchen, grabbed a pair of scissors, started ripping apart the material to see inside this plushie, and what she saw made her heart stop because there was a camera behind the eye of the Miss Piggy doll with a tiny speaker beneath it. Um. And yeah, that is absolutely horrifying. And the thing is, I don't know if this is a creepypasta or if this is real because stuff like this has happened before. Cameras and things have been hidden in kids' toys. Even like things like baby monitors and stuff have been hacked and people talk through it and look through it. And like, it's just a privacy invasion that is terrifying. And then of course, I had to talk about the lost tapes of Miss Piggy. I found this strange story about a father who bought a used VHS tape of the Muppets and would put the movie on for his kids and he would leave the room and just go do whatever he needed to do. And he always wondered why his kids would be up and moving like 20 minutes later as if the movie ended and they were bored and wanted to do something else. He began to think that maybe it was just like a, a super short movie. So one day he decided to stay and sit down on the couch with his kids to watch the movie with them. And just as he anticipated about 20 minutes into the movie, this glitch happens where Miss Piggy is in the middle of singing and the movie just freezes while her mouth is wide open open and it stays like that for about five minutes straight. So you're just like looking at this horrifying image of like Miss Piggy's mouth wide open. It kind of looks like she's about to like come out of your screen to bite you. And so after these five minutes, it slowly fades to black and then opens up into this new scene. It shows this strange footage of Miss Piggy standing in the dark looking dazed. She's covered in mud and dirt. Her hair is a mess and she's just like staring into the distance and the music is this low rumble of suspense, but nothing is actually happening. And then the VHS tape comes to an end and there's just static on the screen. And so the father was so freaked out, obviously like got rid of the VHS tape, but apparently he did like some research online and there's other people who have said that this has happened to them as well, which is so creepy. And I'm hoping this is just a creepypasta because if I stumbled across that, I would be terrified. Like, what does it mean? Why is Miss Piggy like in some dark, creepy room looking scared. If you guys have ever seen this, definitely let me know. But I Back in 2009, people started talking about a show called Candle Cove that they remembered from their childhood, but no records of it actually exist. And it's actually crazy how many people remember watching this, but the show almost seemed to vanish off the face of the earth. It was kind of like a Mandela effect where 50% of people remembered watching it and the other 50% of people never even heard about it before. People remember it as being a very nightmarish show that aired in the 70s at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Afternoon. So when they got home from school, they would immediately grab a snack and go and sit in front of their television. Now it was made for kids, but every episode was super dark and disturbing. Candle Cove only aired for a few months, and it was about this little girl named Janice who imagined she was friends with pirates. The characters were all played by creepy marionette dolls, so it was essentially this show based on puppets. The pirate ship was called the Laughing Stock, and it apparently had this giant smiling face on the front of it and the smiling mouth was so wide that it looked like it was swallowing the ocean as it glided through the water and the weirdest part about the ship is that it could actually laugh apparently what people remember most though was this villain character called the skin taker whose top hat and cloak appeared to be made of children's skin and obviously as a kid that would be horrifying to see apparently his mouth didn't open and close like it's normally supposed to but instead his jaw would just 
move from side to side as he spoke. I feel like that would be so hard to do. Let me try. Hi, my name is Jahi. People remember in the show, the little girl would go up to this skin taker pirate and would be like, why does your mouth move like that? And the skin taker would turn and look directly at the camera and would say, to grind your skin. So there were some very weird episodes that people remember. For example, one time there was one where the whole time the characters were just screaming and running around in circles for the entire 30 minutes. Another episode showed a huge mouth of a dark cave and at the base of the cave, a creepy pirate marionette was talking to a little girl, but their voices were so muffled that you couldn't hear what he was actually telling her. And this went on for a full 30 minutes. It was almost like the show didn't really have a plot in each episode. It was just showing something very strange. There was this other character named Pirate Percy and kids seemed to be really afraid of him as well. He looks like he was built from parts of dolls. It was like this show had a very low budget and was just trying to throw a character together. His head was an old porcelain baby doll and it just looked like this antique that did not belong on his body. And apparently he wasn't a very good pirate because he always got scared so easily. There's also a character named Horace Horrible. He originally was the main villain of the show but now serves as spy and servant for the skin taker, watching the pirates of the laughing stock, reporting to the skin taker about everything they do and obeying his every command. He has a black handlebar mustache, tall narrow teeth, a hook for a hand, and he wears a monocle on his right eye. It's unknown if he keeps his left eye or not. People think he may actually be a sorcerer able to summon creatures from other worlds. Now, I wanted to talk about the nightmares that kids would have after watching this show, which I feel like is really understandable. I mean, it was bizarre. They would be dreaming about the opening jingle of the show and suddenly all the characters would appear out of the darkness, screaming for what seemed like hours and hours. There was this one account of a little girl who kept complaining about seeing the skin taker standing in her closet at night, just moving his jaw back and forth with a creaking sound. Imagine just like lying in your bed at night and just hearing a creaking sound over and over. It almost sounded like a chair to this little girl, but if she walked over to her closet, she would see him sitting in the darkness, moving his jaw back and forth like ee, ee, ee. That sounds like a horror movie sound. Okay, let's talk about the parents' perspective. Because when they would see their kids watching this show, it was just not normal. Parents that had kids back in the 70s remember walking into the room and seeing them sitting on the couch just watching static on the television for 30 minutes straight. And when they would go up and ask their kids what they were doing, the kids would say, I'm watching Candle Cove, mommy. Look! But literally all the parents could see was static. Some parents say they thought their kids were just making it up because they had a very active imagination. And people are just so confused. They're wondering if the show really did exist, was it just made up, or was it real but only kids were able to view it for some sinister reason? Like was there really something supernatural going on about this television show? Now before I go, I just want to say that this show really is just a creepypasta. I didn't want to like leave you guys freaked out or anything. It was first posted by Chris Straub and it went viral extremely quickly. I mean, this is probably one of the most talked about creepypastas, I think. Probably in the top 10 for sure. So I definitely wanted to make a longer video on it because I knew generally what it was about, but I had never like dove down and looked into more details. So if you guys know anything else that I did not mention, definitely comment it down below. 